Hi, my name is JW, and this is the third episode in my series Path to OSCP, hopefully. Since my last episode, I have been reading a lot of OSCP reviews online. Uh, basically, just Google OSCP review, and I hit them on to my pocket. And during the last few days, I've been reading a bunch of them. Uh, in addition to those um, Voln Hub walkthroughs and so forth, and one of the main things that struck out uh, from those tutorials on the actual OSCP course. I mean, of course, not tutorials, reviews, because uh, pretty much the same way as with I did. I found with CISP that the people who pass, they don't want to spoil it because they know that the majority of learning comes from just banging your head against the wall. So there are no big spoilers, at least what I've found. Not that I was looking because I don't want to spoil it myself, but mainly reviews on the OSCP and sort of high level ideas on what went wrong for those people who failed their first exam or in general had trouble with the course. And uh, the main thing that I've found is that people who didn't have any sort of plan, weren't that organized, uh, had trouble passing the exam. And the second time they went for it and they made a plan like this is how many hours I'm going to be doing this and then I'm going to take a break, eat, sleep, whatever. And also a structured walkthrough for every single host of how they're going to enumerate that host. like. Do an end map, do this, do that, do that, and ask these, this and this question every single host. Because probably when you're in that sort of moment and you're 16 hours awake trying to get uh, on with Red Bull fumes and you're banging at your head against the wall for eight hours straight on this one machine, probably uh, your past self uh, that was not under this stress uh, was thinking more clearly, so read up on what you had to think or what you had to say previous to this. Uh, and also one of the main things that people were saying that they did for prep work uh, for this OSCP course and the exam uh, that follows is that they tried to make their uh, everything as organized as possible. Like, for example, let's say that your Nmap scan uh, finds that this is a Windows 2003 server, well, then you need to be able to quickly uh, figure out which exploit uh, you might use for which vulnerabilities. And if you're basically, at the time of the exam, starting to Google Windows 2003 exploit or vulnerability, you're going to be screwed. So I've already started doing this and compiling my own uh, lists of links, like I'm going to link, uh, give the link to my links, my bookmarks on Pinboard uh, that I've tagged with OSCP. And uh, also I've started compiling some small bit of exploits that are related to Vulnhub uh, walkthroughs that I've uh, read through. Also, I found really nice, sorry, tutorials on reverse shells and other cheat sheets uh, on High On Coffee website. I'm going to link to those. Um, and I've been just trying to think how I could make my life, what, what can I do in preparation for this actual lab that starts in six days now. So, or rather in six days, I will be hopefully connected to the lab and trying to hack my first computer there. Uh, yeah, it starts on the 28th, which is a Sunday, which um, I won't be hacking away all day. I need to work that day. Uh, but Sunday evening or afternoon, I will be starting and hopefully getting connected to VPN over to the labs and doing an Nmap ping scan of seeing all of the hosts that are in the public public net and I will be starting to draw my uh, network graph. Um, I'm thinking of using OmniGraffle for Mac. 
I've heard good things about it. If I was using Windows, I would be using Visio because that's a superior product. Um, one of the other things, uh, because I was reading these um, walkthroughs quite a bit, so I figured that I could then give another shot at actually uh, penetrating these Vulnhub vulnerable uh, VMs. And I did manage to get through one called DICE 1.100. Uh, that was okay. A um, few things that I bumped my head against, like not just reading carefully and like rushing through. Again, if I had a checklist of do this, do this, do this, do this, it would have been probably better. Uh, but then I moved on to the second part of the DI series called uh, DI's 1.110. And quickly, I was stuck against the wall. I I found an interesting core dump. I was able to um, read stuff from it. But then I was just basically handing the shadow passwords to over to John the Ripper and using the rock you word list that's available in Kali that I've had good experiences with previously. And for 30, 45 minutes, close to an hour, I let it roll uh, and nothing. It was just heating up my computer and no ro no results. Uh, I figured that since I mainly just want to learn the basics, I don't want to be stuck for several hours doing a task that could take infinity because basically it could, or rather just a few days. Um, but if it's the wrong way to do it, if I'm not using the correct flag, if I don't have the correct word list, whatever, if it's just not a crackable password, then I'm wasting my time that I could be using to actually learn stuff. So I decided to check the uh, walkthrough and basically slowly scroll through uh, until I found basically the position that I was in myself and see what they were doing differently. Nothing. They were doing exactly the same command. The thing that they did differently was they used a different word list. They used this thing called dark code list. And basically, I didn't have it in the Kali Linux. I tried Googling for it, couldn't find it for download easily. Uh, I checked the other walkthroughs. Every single one of them used the exact same word list. I checked what they found was, uh, what they found was the uh, dictionary word uh, for a certain local user. I checked my word lists, none of them have it. So I would have been there for two days cracking away and nothing would have happened. I was kind of bummed by that. So I guess I'm going to be sticking with uh, reading vol the walkthroughs, but I'm going to give uh, cracking them another chance just so that I could get some more experience of this getting through uh, a hard place. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Someone was asking me, um, do I know any, like what, what are the setups? What are the distributions of Linux in the lab? To be honest, I don't know. Uh, most of the reviews that I've read uh, have told me that there are a bunch of different Windows boxes Linux, FreeBSD, maybe even uh, some mobile devices could be uh, desktop, but I don't know. Uh, I've my OSCP hasn't started, or my penetration testing with Kali Linux hasn't started yet, uh, but it will start in less than a week. But I doubt that I will be able to disclose that information, even if I found out. So. Just Google it, and if you find something, good. I don't honestly know, and I honestly don't care. I want to break most of the stuff, or break into most of the stuff in the lab, but given my time constraint of only 30 days, I'm not hopeful that I'm going to get 100%, not even close, but hopefully prepared enough with enough exploits and tools to get me through the exam just before my vacation in April. Uh, that concludes part three. See you soon.